Chen Shuesen, a giant in the Chinese scientific community, is hailed as the father of Chinese aerospace. His greatness lies not only in his personal scientific achievements, but also in his significant influence on the development of China's missile technology, particularly his Chen Shuesen ballistics theory. This theory not only propelled the rapid development of China's missile technology, but also strategically impacted the global security landscape. Dear viewers, Welcome back to our channel. China's remarkable advancements in missile technology, including ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and hypersonic missiles, have surpassed those of many countries worldwide. Behind this achievement lies not only superb technology and national support, but also the indispensable contribution of Qian Shuesen's ballistics. Qian's foresight and wisdom have elevated China's missiles to new heights in terms of power, range, and maneuverability. However, this remarkable achievement in missile technology raises questions, why is China's missile technology so advanced? What impact has the application of Qian Shuesen's ballistics had on the development of China's missile technology? How does China's missile technology development affect the global security landscape? China has no rivals in the field of missiles, not even the United States. China possesses all types of missiles that the US has, and even more advanced ones. China's intercontinental missiles, cruise missiles, hypersonic missiles, anti-radiation missiles, etc., form the fundamental basis of China's strength. The United States currently only has one type of intercontinental missile in service, the Minuteman III ballistic missile, and it's noteworthy that a Chinese designer contributed to its design. The Minuteman III is a relic of the past century and cannot compare to China's intercontinental missiles in terms of range, power, or maneuverability. Moreover, due to its long service life, the Minuteman III has frequently encountered problems, with recent test launches ending in consecutive failures. It's not an exaggeration to say that when the service life of the Minuteman III expires, the United States will have no land-based missiles worth mentioning. Additionally, given the current strength of the U.S. military, it may not be easy to develop a new strategic missile. Although the U.S.'s Minuteman III intercontinental missile also uses solid fuel, it can only be launched from missile silos, whereas China's DF-41 can be launched not only from traditional missile silos, but also from mobile launchers. It can be launched on highways or from mountainous terrain, unaffected by terrain or weather conditions. From this perspective, China's secondary nuclear retaliation capability far exceeds that of the United States, not to mention hypersonic missiles. The United States still hasn't figured out hypersonic missiles, while China's hypersonic missiles have long been in service, and China definitely has more than one type of hypersonic missile. Why can China's missiles lead the world? This inevitably brings up Qian Shuesen's ballistics. Dr. Qian Shuesen's foresight and wisdom are truly unparalleled. As early as the 1940s, Dr. Qian proposed the famous Qian Shuesen ballistics theory, which remains the most complex and unpredictable ballistic trajectory to this day, truly unique. In China, missiles are generally divided into two categories, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. The difference between the two is quite evident. Ballistic missiles fly in space outside the atmosphere, where there is no air resistance, allowing them to fly farther and faster than cruise missiles. However, their trajectories are relatively fixed and are often easily intercepted by enemy missile defense systems. On the other hand, cruise missiles travel within the atmosphere, affected by air resistance, and their speeds are usually not particularly high. Take the Tomahawk cruise missile manufactured by the United States as an example. Its maximum speed is limited to 0.72 Mach, and its operational range is only up to 2,500 km. However, a significant advantage of this cruise missile is its ability to adjust its flight path during missions, greatly enhancing its capability to penetrate enemy defenses. Chen Shuesen's ballistics combines the advantages of cruise missiles and ballistic missiles, endowing missiles with powerful firepower, long range, high speed, and the ability to change trajectory during flight. Existing global missile defense systems find it difficult to intercept such trajectories. Therefore, 
China's missile technology leads the world. The Chinese Dongfeng series of missiles cover a range from 500 km to 15,000 km, helping counter the U.S.'s island chain blockade strategy. Now China's missile strike range covers all of America's island chain blockades. For example, the Dongfeng-26 targets Guam, the Dongfeng-16 targets Okinawa, and the Dongfeng-27 can target the third island chain of the United States. Regardless of which missile, they can destroy the so-called island chain blockade of the United States in the shortest possible time. Moreover, China also has the Dongfeng 21D specifically designed to strike U.S. aircraft carrier fleets. With this missile, the U.S. naval fleet has no advantage against China, and based on the Dongfeng 21D, China has also developed the YJ-21 anti-ship ballistic missile for use on destroyers, further diminishing the survivability of the U.S. aircraft carrier fleet. In today's world, missile technology is a crucial manifestation of national security and defense capabilities. In this regard, our country has achieved remarkable accomplishments, making significant contributions to safeguarding national sovereignty and territorial integrity. In contrast, although the United States has a certain level of military strength, it does not seem to have made significant breakthroughs in missile technology. Most of the U.S.'s anti-ship missiles, intercontinental missiles, and cruise missiles are products of the last century, and there is indeed a certain gap compared to our country's advanced missile technology. For example, the anti-ship missiles currently used by the United States are still the Harpoon missiles that entered service in the 1970s. In the past, the United States was constrained by the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty and could not develop new types of missiles. However, even after the INF Treaty expired in 2019, progress in missile development in the United States remained slow. In the past four years, the United States has not developed a missile with international competitiveness. Meanwhile, our country has made a series of important breakthroughs in missile technology, not only leading the world in anti-ship missiles, intercontinental missiles, and cruise missiles, but also demonstrating strong capabilities in other areas. Therefore, in the field of missiles, our country is undoubtedly a worthy leader. It is worth mentioning that the development of our country's missile technology cannot be separated from the efforts of many outstanding enterprises and research institutions. For example, companies like China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, CASC, and China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, CASIC, have made significant contributions to the development of our country's missile technology. In addition, our country also has many famous websites and organizations, such as Xinhua News Agency and People's Daily Online, actively reporting and disseminating the latest achievements of our country in missile technology. In conclusion, our country has taken the lead in the field of missiles worldwide. We are proud of this achievement, but we must continue to work hard to make greater contributions to safeguarding national sovereignty and territorial integrity, as well as world peace and development. Finally, let me summarize today's video, hoping it has been enlightening and valuable for you. In today's sharing, we delved into China's remarkable achievements in missile technology. From ballistic missiles to cruise missiles and hypersonic missiles, China's technology has reached a world-leading level. One of the key factors behind this is the application of Chen Shuesen's ballistics. Chen Shuesen's wisdom and foresight have guided the direction of China's missile technology development, enabling China to maintain a significant competitive advantage in the missile field. However, with the continuous advancement of China's missile technology, I also begin to feel a sense of worry. Although the development of these technologies can provide more security for the country's defense, it may also exacerbate instability in regional and global security. The proliferation of missile technology may lead to an arms race and even conflict and war. Therefore, we need to approach the development of missile technology more cautiously, adopt a more responsible attitude, and promote joint efforts for global peace and security. In this world filled with information and increasing tension, we must realize that the development of missile technology is not just a matter of technological progress, but also carries significant political, strategic, and security implications. Therefore, 
As ordinary citizens, we should also pay close attention to this and actively promote dialogue and cooperation internationally, jointly striving to build a peaceful and stable world. At the same time, I hope that our national leaders can handle the various challenges and risks brought about by the development of missile technology with greater wisdom and pragmatism. While pursuing national security and interests, we must also consider maintaining regional and global peace and stability, resolving differences and conflicts through multilateral cooperation and diplomatic dialogue, rather than adopting unilateralism or using strength to bully the weak to solve problems. Only through joint efforts can we achieve true peace and security. Let us work together to build a harmonious and stable international environment tirelessly. May we guide the development of missile technology with wisdom and rationality, making it a tool for maintaining peace rather than a destabilizing factor. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. That's all for today's video. See you next time for more exciting content. Goodbye. Goodbye.